Problem 10. Daniel finds a rectangular index card and measures its diagonal to be 8 cm. Daniel then cuts out equal squares of side length of 1 cm on opposite corners of the index card and measures the distance between the two closest vertices of these squares to be 4 root 2 cm, as shown below. Daniel then measures the distance between the two closest vertices of these squares to be 4 root 2 cm, as shown below. What is the area of the original index card? Now, one of the biggest pitfalls in geometry problems is to make erroneous assumptions about side lengths. One might say that if I were to connect this line and draw this diagonal, this diagonal and this diagonal will be collinear. That will be incorrect, and your question will be over before you even begin. Because just by basic intuition, right, you see that just by drawing it out roughly, it goes out of the square or rectangle. So it can't be that easy, so make sure not to make these erroneous assumptions, because then you failed before you even began. So don't base your judgments off of, you know, basic numbers. Base it off of concrete numbers and given variables. In this case, this image is a bit small to work with. So redraw it on the test, but for the sake of convenience, I'll just copy paste it right here. Now, this corners, these two corners look very bad. They're not very good to work with. So let's connect it into it. Let's connect it and complete the rectangle so we have a shape that we're comfortable working with, right? So we have roughly something like this. <clears throat> but with this, these diagonals still look very bad. So let's try to break the shape down into even smaller shapes so that's easier to work with. And right off the bat, I think of connecting these helper lines because I know what the width of each of these lines are, which is one. So always base it off of given information. So we should do it like this. Now, after connecting everything, we can say that this is one, right? That's one and that's one and that's one. But it's very frustrating to not know what this side length is. So let's call this to be x. If that's x, then let's call this side to be correspondingly y. Now we can complete the rectangle. That's x. Or, oh, that's a bit small. So x, that would be one. 1, that would be y. Now, what is a bunch of diagonals within a rectangle to remind you of? That should remind you of a Pythagorean theorem, because look at that. That's a right triangle. And right triangles with the hypotenuse and the base, we can solve for the relationship between the bases. So let's relate it to that information. And just by a big visual, right, I see that the inner rectangle houses a right triangle right here. And this right triangle is useful. I'm going to redraw because that's a very bad triangle. I know this is a good right triangle. Because I know the side lengths. This is x, this is y. The hypotenuse is 4 root 2. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 root 2 squared, which is 16 times 2, which is 32. What about another right triangle? Well, I see here that an outer right triangle, the one drawn in blue, is apparent as well. Now, how did I know to look out there? Well, I already defined a bunch of outer side lengths. So most likely, I should have a right triangle on the outer rims. So I have, from this one, x plus 2 squared plus y plus 2 squared, right, should give 8 squared of 64. Now we can solve for both variables because we have two equations. Expanding out the second one, we get x squared plus 4x plus y squared plus 4y plus 8 is equal to 64. Now we can combine this with the red formula of x squared plus y squared is equal to 32 by subtracting this equation from this equation. To do that, we would end up with, I'll switch to black now because it's one equation, that would be 4xy plus, or not 4xy, 4, 4x, right, plus 4y plus 8 is equal 32. Therefore, x plus y plus 2 is equal to 8. Therefore, x plus y is equal to 6. Now, with x plus y is equal to 6, we're already halfway done. Because why is this? The reason why for this is because we solve for x plus y is because we're trying to solve for the area of x plus 2, right, times y plus 2. That's the ultimate quantity that we're trying to solve for. But if you were to evaluate this, we get xy plus 2x plus 2y plus 4, which becomes xy plus 2 times x plus y plus 4. I have an x plus y term that I don't know what the value is, but from this, I solve for x and y, which is x plus y is 6. So this becomes 12. But what is this xy term? That's very annoying. Well, one trick within algebra to solve for the product of two numbers given the sum of the two numbers Right? We have x plus y, we know that's equal to 6, but what is the product of the two numbers? Well, a common technique used is to use the perfect square formula, where x plus y squared is equal to x squared plus y, um, plus y squared plus 2xy. We have the xy term, we know what this is, and we know what this is, believe it or not. And to, before I get there, let's simplify. That's 6 squared over 36, that's 2xy. That's what we're trying to solve for. But what is x squared plus y squared? Well, we previously established from Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus y squared is 32. So if you scroll down and substitute it, this would just be equal to plus 32. So therefore, 2xy must give 36 minus 32. In other words, xy is 4 divided by 2 to give 2. So going back to it, this becomes 2, 
and we finally can solve for our final answer by summing these three numbers up, which is equal to 18, bringing you to a final choice of answer choice E.